Hi, my name is Ksenia Gusiva. You may also know me as Famix Stitch on Instagram, and I'm an embroidery artist from St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, so I uh, love architecture, and uh, I mostly embroider architectural pieces, landscapes, and I have uh, over 132 city embroidered already. Um, my second passion is uh, embroidery of florals, and the third is embroidery on clothes. Um, yeah, so I've been doing embroidery for um, about five years, since 2015, and uh, I have a lot of experience that I'm going to share with you today. Um, I'm going to show how to embroider simple abstract design on uh, jeans. Uh, that's something you can repeat, do at home, and uh, like while we can't go shopping, we can get in your outfit just uh, <laughs> upgrading our uh, old stuff so um here are the jeans i'm going to uh, do and uh, i decided to embroider on this pocket area uh, so the jeans fabric is actually great for embroidery in my opinion because uh, it doesn't have a lot of stretch Jeans can be different, I know, but uh, let's talk about the average uh, jeans fabric. So it doesn't have a lot of strength and it's dense enough to embroider without uh, the embroidery hoop. Uh, embroidery hoop, uh, it's a supply that uh, embroiderers uh, use to create tension so the fabric won't get creases and uh, we can place stitches uh, uh, neat and uh, pretty so um, this is my color palette I'm going to use a, a cotton embroidery thread so the embroidery thread uh, has uh, six strands and I'm going to use all of them because I want to create different textures and if you don't have embroidery thread at home maybe you have yarn that's can that can be awesome too because uh, it's even more textured so let's start with this pink color. Um, okay. So I'm going to show you how to start stitches without knots. Because uh, that's a great way to start <laughs> um, stitches, especially when you're embroidering on clothes. So you won't get uh, anything on the back that will <laughs> okay, so the thread tangled, sorry. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so I have a piece of thread and uh, there are three strands. Okay, I'll, I'll show from the start. <laughs> um, so these are a DMC brand and there is also Encore, uh, Sublime Stitching, and a lot of different uh, brands. They all have different color palettes, and uh, you can find a lot of interesting stuff. So uh, let's say we have a thread and we pull it out. I usually use a piece uh, like from my elbow and back. Okay. Uh, having pretty scissors is uh, one of the benefits of doing embroidery because you can't cut thread if you don't have uh, pretty scissors. <laughs> That's part of the fun. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, six strands. And uh, I want to embroider with six strands. But um, as I said, I'm going to show you how to embroider without uh, making knots. So we need only three strands. And we can take... Like divide the end and slide down, dividing all the lengths. So uh, now we have uh, one piece of thread or three strands. We bend it so the two ends will be together. Taking the needle, um, how do I thread the needle? Uh, so I just press on the ends, uh, taking needle very, very close and push them through 
and that's it. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna cut the ends. So they will be the same length and do it again. So I'm pressing on the end and threading. Uh, about the needle, uh, since uh, jeans is pretty dense fabric, uh, I am using embroidery needle number five. It has a pretty big eye and uh, a sharp end, so you will uh, go through easily. Okay, so I threaded the needle and uh, now I have uh, the loop on, on the end, you see? And two ends on the other end. So we are going on the back, coming up. Let's say we'll make short stitch, coming back. And to secure the thread, we're just going through this loop. Okay, so thread is secured, we can go further and uh, we don't have a knot. So now I'm going to do uh, split stitches. So I'm coming up, splitting the stitch with my needle. Okay. And then again, I'm doing stitch, going up through the thread okay so um I'm going, I'm going to do uh different shapes in different colors and we'll show you a few stitches so this one is called uh, split stitch and you can also call it um uh, split uh, back stitch because it's kind of uh, both <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to make um, the triangle here. Uh, so for embroidering clothes, make sure you don't make uh, stitches too long because uh, when you will like, <laughs> leave in those uh, jeans or t-shirt, uh, they will get loose and um, will be distracting. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it about the split stitch. And now I'm doing it uh, backwards. So I'm coming up a space ahead and going down through the previous stitch. Before I was uh, coming up through the previous stitch, like now, for example. Okay, so maybe we have some questions uh, that I can answer. Let's see. How can I get started in embroidery? So embroidery is all about practice. And uh, to get started, uh, find something you like, like some design you like, because embroidering something uh, you enjoy is much more fun than something you just, eh, OK, I'll go with it. Um, and uh, embroidery community is very welcoming and kind. And uh, a lot of uh, artists have uh, tutorials, videos, articles uh, I <laughs> I do have uh, uh, a lot of stuff on my YouTube channel uh, Instagram uh, account I have free patterns so to get started so you just need supplies and uh, get to work practice okay we also can uh, do stitches 
same stitches a uh, different way like we're going down and up in the one go without poking two times okay it won't work here <laughs> and uh, make sure you have uh, the right tension because if you are uh, pull, pulling thread too much uh, it's going to the fabric will have wrinkles and all that stuff okay yeah and about starting in embroidery uh, if you want to start with uh, embroidery on clothes uh, soon I'll have a, a online course uh, released uh, with Domestica. We just finished uh, shooting it uh, yesterday. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, when I finish on jeans, I'll show you a few design from the course. So you would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm running out of thread and I did the section. So uh, I will uh, secure the thread now. Um, my way is just sliding under the stitches on the back without poking fabric, without touching um, fabric because you can go uh, to the front side and you don't need it. Okay, so two, three times and it's safe. Uh, believe me, <laughs> I have embroidered on clothes uh, for years and uh, since I'm a little bit lazy, um, I don't usually wash them by hand. I'm using a washing machine and uh, all threads are fine. They're all still there. And uh, these ways of securing thread uh, works great. Okay, so I'm going to move to this color. This time, I think I'll use even more strands. Okay, so questions? How can I add some texture in embroidery? Oh, so uh, there are a few ways, uh, I would say. Uh, first of all, there are uh, great stitches that create, create texture. And there are uh, 3D-like stitches, like Pika stitch. And uh, it's like a leaf looking out of embroidery we can actually do it here like right in the <laughs> chat if you want me to show it speak at stitch and um, um, other ways to add texture is uh, uh, using different kind of threads so like yarn even bigger yarn <laughs> maybe some appliques uh, i tried to do some um, uh, you know, try to use my as a, a new uh, elements for embroidery, like to stitch it on and uh, etc. So there are a lot of ways. Okay, uh, now I have uh, six strands. Oh, <laughs> I have six strands. I threaded them and I'll show you how, how I make knots usually. Um, so you like making a loop then placing the end of thread here and uh, just pull this kind of knots usually survives uh, embroidery on clothes too well in my case i don't know maybe i'm just really good at making knots but they they're fine okay so i'm so, hate love stitch uh, some people hate it some people love it but i don't know i think if you learn how to do it uh, you can't hate it because it's amazing and it's one of the stitches that uh, helps to create a nice texture volume okay so we come up then we're holding uh, the thread in the left hand and widening it uh, on the needle like, let's do three wraps. Okay, one, two, three. And then we placing needle 
uh, in the near, nearest hole, but not in the same that you came up. Pull the thread with your left hand, so the knot is, uh, so the thread is uh, down and go through. Okay. Uh, this happens, these struggles happen um, if you uh, uh, pull thread uh, too hard. Okay. So for the next knot, I'm going to do four reps. One, two, three, four. Uh, the more you do, the more reps you do, uh, the bigger knot you get. Okay. And also, uh, I don't know, maybe you've heard, <laughs> but there are a lot of uh, different um, uh, needles for embroidery. And some of them, like this one, this is a sharp, uh, this is a blunt round tip and uh, the huge eye. With this needle, it's going to be uh, hard to make French knots because uh, the eye is uh, really big and it's hard to, uh, push through. Okay, so this time making five wraps and yeah, okay. Other questions? Um, uh, when embroidering on clothing, how do you make sure your stitches and knots uh, will last? Uh, well, if you, uh, the ways that I showed to start and finish and to make knots, this is working for me for years. And uh, I think if you're not sure in your knots, uh, you can embroider like on a piece of fabric and wash it in a washing machine a few times and see what happens. Uh, I think nothing will happen if you're securing them, uh, uh, if you're securing them, if you don't forget to secure them. Yeah. What is your secret for clean edges? Oh, uh, that's probably for embroidery in the hoop. Um, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, so when you embroider in the hoop, I will just show how the hoop works. Maybe uh, some people didn't see it. So you have the inner hoop and outer hoop, and you just like placing fabric uh, in between those. And you get it, okay. This is a tightening screw, so you're like, yeah, and tightening back. So, uh, hoop used to make the tension, and uh, how do I, I embroider near the edges? How I do them uh, clean? Well, there is no uh, huge secret. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, let me show you some tool. Okay, I won't show you. So there is um, um, a different uh, devices for transfer. For example, I love to use a Pilot Friction Heat Erasable Pen. It's a long name, uh, Pilot is a brand, and uh, the rest just means that you can erase this uh, uh, pen uh, with uh, hair dryer or iron or high temperature. So uh, when I embroider, I draw the line here so I would know where the edge uh, ends. And then when I need to embroider near the edge, so um, there is an inner hoop that won't get you like poked through. So I'm just moving the hoop and uh, embroider so that uh, I would have an access to that area. And, oh, and I have the second way, but it's for like more 
experienced teachers who feel the tension of fabric, who can uh, like uh, keep the tension. All right, so I'm just uh, getting some fabric out and I'm creating tension with my finger and embroider on this area. Then I'm placing the fabric, sorry. <laughs> then I'm placing um, fabric back and it's all uh, good. But for this, you need uh, like just a little bit of practice. Yeah. Okay, I'm back to the frame now. Okay, let's see. This is the next question. Uh, how do you pick thread color schemes? Oh, <laughs> I'll show you. Um, so I mostly use the DMC brand um, uh, thread because there is a huge palette and I have all the numbers, so kind of, <laughs> yeah. And DMC has this uh, uh, color card. It's like a book uh, with uh, actual thread. So it's, uh, it's like, okay. Um, so this is uh, actual thread and uh, you can see the colors and you can see the whole palette. Uh, for example, these are metallic ones. I don't know if you see, but they are shiny and hard to work with, but beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And uh, this helps uh, a lot. So, um, how do I pick color schemes? Um, yeah, so I have this color card and uh, mostly since I'm embroidering architecture and like interiors and plants, um, most oftenly used method <laughs> is uh, observation. So I see the buildings, I see uh, how the plants look. Sometimes I go a little bit uh, crazy and uh, uh, do the otherwise. So, um, yeah, uh, mostly it's observation and uh, sometimes it's uh, a little bit of color theory because there are um, rules that explains uh, how colors work together. So if I know that I'm going to embroider like on a red t-shirt, maybe I'll pick something green like as complementary color and they will be bright and good looking <laughs> to make some accent for example. So it's color theory, it's observation, and uh, it's just uh, sometimes experience, like I love some col colors a lot and uh, color combos. Like my favorite is uh, uh, pink, yellow, and green. These colors are awesome together. I don't have yellow here, but it's kind of yellow and it still looks uh, pretty. So. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make a few more French notes and maybe move to other stitch. And let's answer one more question while, while I'm <laughs> at French notes still. Okay. Um, how do you start an add stitch without making a knot? Yeah, that's what I was uh, showing uh, at the beginning. And I want to add um, that uh, it, it's called the uh, loop start. When you thread the both end, you have a loop on the back and all of that. And um, you can do it only if you, have, you want to embroider with two, four, or six strands. So if you want to embroider with two strands, you take one, you bend it, and you get two. Yeah. Okay. The French knot to fill the area with French knots takes time like embroidery in general, because <laughs> embroidery is more like relaxation, meditation. It's not about rushing and uh, like running somewhere. So it takes time. Okay. Okay. I'm going to secure the thread. So I'm going under the nearby stitches, but without poking the fabric. Sometimes it's easier to do with the um, eye of needle 
because it's not sharp and it's not going to poke the fabric for sure. So I'm going down and you can go like in different direction to make sure that thread will stay there. Okay. Now let's use green and make chain stitches. These are like um, the split stitch, French knots, chain stitch are uh, basics uh, of embroidery. Okay, I'm going to make a loop start again. So I have three strands and I'm placing both ends together. This is a loop. Okay. Okay, pressing, going through. Okay, for the chain stitch, um, we're going down in the same hole. Since I have a loop, I'm going into the loop also. Um, and we're leaving a loop here. <laughs> then space ahead, going up through the loop. Okay. And again, going back in the same hole. And again. Okay. So let's do some more questions. Can you mix different colors of thread in the same stitch? Uh, yes, of course. And uh, uh, I think that can look really nice. It won't look uh, like uh, if you were painting with a uh, paint, like if you were painting with watercolor, for example, because uh, the colors won't blend ex exactly. But um, there are thread uh, that call, called uh, variegated thread. So uh, it, it changes color as it goes. And uh, this uh, nice effect, like all, all of these threads are variegated. Yeah. What stitches do you use to embroider on shirts? That's the beauty of embroidery. You can embroider any stitches on anything. Like there's people uh, that embroider on uh, badminton rackets. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically everything you can. But t-shirts uh, have uh, another problem. It's a really, they're usually made of really stretchy fabric. So if you're not using hoop, the thread will be loose. If you're using hoop, you probably will overstretch uh, the t-shirt and the, the stitches, well, you take it out, the stitches will get like loose again. So um, for embroidery on t-shirts, uh, it's better to use some kind of stab stabilizer. Um, yeah, for example, water soluble stabilizers that what I'm using Usually they help to transfer design because you just draw a design on stabilizer and uh, they're great for taking care of the unnecessary tension. Okay. Uh, how do you keep embroidered areas from stretching? Some sort of baking? Baking, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's what stabilizer is for. So uh, uh, you can use uh, different kinds. There are um, there are water soluble stabilizer that you, uh, for example, sticky ones like uh, DMC Magic Paper or Sticky Fabri Solvi. It's sold in US mostly. Um, you stick it on the. That's how I actually embroider it, like uh, this stuff. <laughs> 
so I had the uh, magic paper on and I stitched through it. And then uh, when I done stitching, I'm just placing it in water and that's it. Or I also use the hoop because <laughs> um, like uh, how the stabilizer helps. Uh, your fabric is stretching and you're placing the fabric that doesn't stretch, you're placing both of them uh, in the hoop and uh, the stabilizer doesn't get uh, to like, uh, doesn't <laughs> make the uh, lower fabric not stretchy too, kind of. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry, I'm forgetting words, but I'll just <laughs> keep going. And there is a, a tear away stabilizer. It doesn't uh, go anywhere. So when you're done um, and when you embroider with it, you're placing it on the back and you are going through. And when you're done, you then just tear away um, the rest of stabilizer that uh, you didn't stitch through. So. Okay. Can I close a hole in my pants with embroidery? Yes. <laughs> yes, and actually, these are uh, the jeans that has, it's a common problem, I think, not just me. Um, so, uh, the hole in this area, like between ties, and uh, that was an experiment, and uh, like I wore them uh, two or three times, and uh, it still works. So, I just placed um, the area in the hoop, and I did the uh, basket stitch. I'll show you uh, it uh, now. And uh, like when I place them out of the hoop, you see, it's like when it's stretched, the thread is uh, not loose. So when you wear it, it's like this. Uh, to make sure it lasts longer, I think it would make sense to stitch through some kind of patch or something else. Yeah. But I just want to see how long it will last and uh, we'll try the version with patch later. And uh, like, even if you have a hole that <laughs> not in this area, you can embroider a lot. So for example, using stabilizer and placing uh, fabric on the back, you'll have a perfect area to embroider any design. So that's that's what embroidery is for <laughs> not only of course but uh, embroidery on clothes to cover holes to cover stains uh, for example uh, that's how i uh, started doing embroidery on clothes uh, my dress has stains uh, that doesn't come off and i was like ah, <laughs> i need to do something and i do embroidery okay so i merged this yeah okay i'm going to do a few uh, chain stitches and show you the basket uh, weave. Okay. Uh, for abstract patterns, do you plan ahead or make it up as you go? Uh, to be honest, um, I planned the colors like for this uh, event, uh, but uh, I didn't actually like plan the stitches because I wanted to make it like I will show you now a stitch that will help you to cover hole in the pants that's that's something but uh, yeah you can uh, think about it before and uh, like using watercolor or pencils or iPad I don't know what you uh, like to draw in just with uh, different colors you can uh, like make a layout something okay so securing the thread and i think with experience it will be easier to come up with designs because you'll know what is uh, what looks good and what not for you okay How do I transfer design to my clothing? So uh, you can transfer using uh, the stabilizer I talked about, and um, um, uh, you can transfer using, let's say for light fabrics, um, it's pilot friction heat raisable pen uh, or water soluble pen. And uh, water soluble pen comes off uh, 
when you place it in water and also there is a air erasable or disappearing <laughs> and uh, but they last uh, only for a few hours so if you want to make something big it won't go um, I prefer to use stabilizer to transfer because you never know when the ink may reappear and it happens with pilot friction pen sometimes uh, if you're in the cold temperatures for example so make sure you know it yeah okay Okay, so am I going to show you the basket weave now? Threading the needle. So just coming up and making, we'll start from uh, horizontal stitches and going back. It may, it may be not the perfect stitch for the area, but uh, we'll make it work. Okay, so let's do five stitches, for example. Okay, and now uh, vertical stitches, but not that simple. <laughs> so we come in, um, we're like uh, going to do the weaving um, uh, over the thread, under, over, under, over. So, and down. Okay, now do you see it? Yeah, let me take it this way. <laughs> okay, then again. And now, since we were uh, went over the thread, now we're going down, over, so they're alternating. Okay. And again, uh, you can place uh, stitches close there and uh, it will look different, so there is a lot of stuff to experiment with. Okay, let's answer some questions. Uh, if I decide I like my embroidery, I want to remove it, will my jeans be damaged? Uh, well, it depends on your jeans, uh, but and depends on the kind of embroidery you did. If uh, there were like a lot of stitches, probably uh, some like holes will be permanent. But for example, I'm taking a huge needle and I'm going through and uh, we can see nothing here. So I think that's how you can try to see, like to <laughs> make some stabbing. Uh, in different places or for example uh, your jeans have the same um, fabric like all over the length <laughs> find a place that's not uh, really visible and just check it uh, fabric like cotton for example is very forgiving you can just take out the stitches and uh, like slide a little on the fabric and uh, it will look as new Okay. So, 
under over under over under uh what are your favorite stitches what are fast stitches to do <laughs> um there is no word fast in embroidery <laughs> no um i my favorite stitches are satin stitch and uh, french knots and back stitch these are my top three and i think with these stitches you can do anything already but if you add like split stitch maybe some chain stitches pico stitch and okay that's too much three stitches <laughs> My favorite are back stitch, satin stitch, and uh, French knots. Um, fast stitches to do. Well, couching stitch, it's kind of a stitch where when you like can place your uh, thread and secure it from the back. That's what we're going to do here, but that's, that wouldn't be couching stitch. But the action couching is like, I'll show you later. These are not so fast stitches, but uh, they're covering a big surface, so it will be faster to embroider something using caution stitch, for example. Okay. Going to take a different color. Um, yeah, this one. So, do we have more questions? Oh, knots, don't be afraid of knots on the thread. <laughs> Just pull it up and, and it's fun. Okay, so when we do this basket stitch, uh, we can go up uh, on the intersection and secure it. Go down. Like to the same place and since it's back we can make it like an X like this okay uh, can I embroider with other materials that are thread have experience with that um yeah, yes, you can. Um, like, well, what is, uh, I forgot how it called like this. Okay, I'm forgetting words. That's my thing. That's how I live. <laughs> so, yes, you can. Well, at first, there are a lot of kind of threads, so you won't get tired of them, I think. And I don't think that I embroider it with, like, I embroider it with yarn. And probably that's, that's it. <laughs> I'm sticking to the <laughs> thread. Well, I also do embroidery with um, paint, with watercolor and uh, this stuff. But in theory, if you can put something in the needle, you can embroider with it. So, I would love to see something embroidered with, I don't know, with what? <laughs> That's an interesting question, actually. Thank you. Uh, what has been your biggest challenge doing an embroidery project? Uh, well, today <laughs> I had a challenge to do embroidery in 30 minutes and uh, I think uh, the time limits are 
like the biggest challenge uh, for embroidery because uh, to make something neat uh, you need to make sure you going down when you want etc so yeah time restrictions are the biggest challenge probably and also embroidery has this uh, <laughs> um, awkward phase how i call it so when you're in the middle of project you look at it and like eh, why i'm doing this and spending so much time but then you finished and it looks perfect and or just good <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so keep moving is uh, can be challenging to, challenging too can you add beans or sequins when you embroider on clothes yes yes uh, it will only affect the uh, care about them because uh, beads and sequins in washing machine doesn't always uh, work so you'll just need to uh, wash them by hand place in soapy water wait take back take out rinse and let it dry yeah. and that's how the couture <laughs> works <laughs> like the sequins and beans yeah Uh, what's your favorite landscape you've embroidered? Oh, I really like my Tallinn embroidery. That's um, the one that was after the London in this uh, uh, video you see uh, before the life went started. Yeah, and Tallinn is the uh, capital of Estonia. That's uh, near my homeland <laughs> in near St. Petersburg uh, yeah so that's probably my favorite because it's detailed and etc yeah oh and I also have the kebab embroidery that's like uh, embroidery when I embroider it kebab so <laughs> that's what it says and uh, I really like that one because it was my first super detailed uh, piece uh, how do you try the needle any tips so I tried um, like very simple I press on the end at, at first make sure the end is not fluffy and all the thread um, all the strands have the same uh, length yeah so you press on and uh, like just place it in the needle eye um, also you can use uh, needle threaders these are devices that really helps because uh, they uh, you just uh, place the metallic thingy uh, from the needle threader and it has a much bigger space and also I yeah I have it with me there is a a needle I don't know if you will see but it's a self threading needle and it's just great but it doesn't work for I'd say more than three strands so you just place uh, the thread uh, onto the eye and uh, like press and that's it you see that's just miracles. So I wish uh, there were uh, self-threading needles with a bigger eye. So you just go. Yeah, that's great. Uh, do you have a hard time finishing projects? I always start new ones, but I have a hard time finishing. Any motivation tips? Yes, I have. I have them. <laughs> um, Sometimes I get tired of one project, uh, so I have uh, around five, six uh, in the process. So, for example, I, I get tired uh, from this one and I'm moving on to the next one. And that's, that's what's been helping me. Okay. Uh, and uh, also the motivation is like... I don't know, the process itself is very calming and uh, it, it helped me with my anxiety issues. 
and helping still. So <laughs> that's my motivation too, because when I don't embroider, I get like, well, crazy little, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a basket stitch uh, with uh, cross stitches, we can call them that, because making little crosses. And I wanted to show you uh, some of my embroideries on clothes, because we, uh, like, it's been a lot of time already. It will just... Uh, secure the thread. Yeah, so as I said, like I have these two cute things. I don't know, I like <laughs> uh, to have the Statue of Liberty and the uh, needle. Looks great. And also, like, um, I'm going to show you a few uh, projects from the online course that I've uh, been doing with Domestica. These are the colorful houses. And this one is not finished. I think I will do like rows of these houses and it will look awesome. Yeah. If you were wondering how the back looks, something like this. A little bit messy, but that's how embroidery looks in the back. Although there is a, I think, I don't know how it's called, but it's uh, like embroidery that looks the same on the both sides. And it's kind of cool, but uh, I I probably don't have the patience to <laughs> make sure the both uh, uh, sides look great. So the balloons. Um, yeah. So I did a lot of uh, different landmarks. So. Uh, you could choose from and embroider one of my favorites, uh, the Fuji Mountains and some flowers. And this is like my best favorite because, I don't know, maybe you've noticed, but it's kind of a uh, close color palette because I really enjoy uh, this one <laughs> uh, later. So. If you want to embroider on clothes with me, uh, stay tuned, follow Domestica and uh, me for updates um, on the release. And uh, I wanted to say uh, thank you for joining. Uh, it was fun, like <laughs> having conversation and answer questions. Um, I hope you enjoyed it too. Yeah, so I guess I'll see you on the internet or on the course. Bye. Es como algo muy frágil. Se me fue la hebra. <risa> I'm going to show you some examples. This is what we've got behind me. ¿Qué más preguntas tengo por aquí? ¿Cómo descubriste que lo tuve?